handwriting on the wall. Well, could you possibly give me the name of your attorney? Because you've been sitting next to me for five whole minutes now, and I want to sue you for desertion. Well, I... I Come on, you did sit next to me. Well, I guess so. I'm with Bagel and Biffin. Now, you say, do you mind if I enter a counterclaim for harassment? Oh, sure. Go right ahead. I'm opening with $25 million. Yeah, I agree. Let's keep it friendly for now. Okay. Bye. Bye now. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, hell, sorry. It's hardly good enough. You damn near punched at the skin. Well, for Christ's sake, can't a girl ride a trolley in this city but that she gets attacked? Uh, right. Excuse me, ma'am. I happen to be an attorney. When that comes up in a bruise, you'll have ample grounds on temporary disfigurement. I'd open it uh, $300 million. Right. Okay, <laughs> Bozo. Who will we'll let again? Oh, yeah? What about my bag? Uh, you oh, kick a man's bag, bag, lady. You tell it to the judge because I'm coming right back at you with a hundred million dollar claim. Oh, Listen, I bub, say. you ring the bell, you get off the trolley, no problem. You ring the bell, you start a conversation, my working conditions become unacceptable and I take it to the high court. Oh, right? My time is money too, and if he can sue, then so can I. Your time? Holy mother, you slay me. You have been sat there ogling my legs since 12 and 34. That is sexual harassment, kiddo. Dig for you, yeah, Well, if that's your case, lady, then uh, I sue you for the child we never had. You go a hundred million? A billion. A billion <laughs> judges are suckers when kids are involved. Well, then I count a claim for of the child plus support. Ah, she's got you there. Child needs its mother. Well, then I sue the judge for a wrongful judgment. <laughs> sue the judge? Hell, you may as well sue the president. Right. Treason! He wants us to sue the president. I claim for no, treason. No, 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 This environment is becoming just a little hostile. Listen, pal, this is a trolley car, not a hostile. You want to sleep? Try the subway. <laughs> It's an interesting thought, but my hair is all my own. Stop calling me a bastard. It's a wig that I own. It. Did you know that the word wig comes from the word wig, meaning the artificial head of hair? Pick the younger was a wig. Yeah, but that had an H in it. What? Fit the younger. Yeah, he was a wig. Well, you see, that's the marvellous thing about this country, Mr. Baker, because it doesn't matter what you are in Britain, you can still become Prime Minister. It's easy if you know how. Sir Geoffrey how? I said stop calling me a bastard. Oh, no. Oh, no, Mr. Baker. I've sat on something horrible and smelly. What is it? My bottom. <laughs> Didn't your friend Daphne say that men with small bottoms make the best lovers? Nah, she never said that. Apple pies. What, men with small apple pies make the best lovers? <laughs> Men with small bottoms make the best apple pies. What? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't get in the way while you're dicing the fruit or flap about while you're rolling the pastry. Or, or if, if, Mr. Baker, if you were rushing into the oven to turn it down, it wouldn't get stuck in the door, do you see? It's obvious. Oh, it becomes clear. What the Aspro, the only soluble aspirin that goes clear to the pain. Well, I never. What? Wear my underpants more than three days on the trot. <laughs> Mind you, if I'm not on the trot, I can let him go a week. You're disgusting, and that's a fact. What is? But at some time in their life, the average person will own a duffel bag. Are you saying, then, are you saying that Winston Churchill never owned a duffel bag? No. Then, then you must be saying that Winston Churchill was an average person. Is that it, Mr Baker? Sounds like treason to me. Mr. Baker sounds like treason. A bit, two completely different sounds. <laughs> that's hardly my problem, is it, Mr. Baker? You're the one that's going to get hung for it. Yes, it is a problem. What is? How best to create a homeland for the Palestinians. Yeah, that's a problem. They could come and live with us. Well, as it happens, I've dealt with it in my book fairly extensively. It's called Great Women of History. I have it here. Would you like to hear chapter one, Benjamin Disraeli? My name is Benjamin Disraeli. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh. In that case, would you like to hear chapter one, Benjamin Disraeli, Mr. Baker? No. Did you understand that? I didn't. I did not understand that a ruddy tall. Not one ruddy word did I understand. Of course you did. And it was in Swedish. <laughs> All right, Sue lovey pops. I do rather think that linguistics is more my line of country than yours. <laughs> Well, I think I'll get some ice creams. Cheers. Not for me, thanks, Bernard. <laughs> hey, Sue, on a diet, eh? Pinch an inch round the spare Pirelli. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just didn't want an ice cream. <laughs> oh, come on, Sue. I don't know why you girls do it. You look great. <laughs> and where would old Alan be without those love handles, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of chop nuts, eh? <laughs> God, I hate these little foreign pimps who think they can make movies. They go child fondlers to a man. <laughs> Actually, I thought of a joke about this one. I thought I might send it in to someone. It's worth a try, don't you think? Goes, um, I went to a Swedish film last night. 
and I haven't been well since. <laughs> eh? What do you think? It's worth a few bob, I'd have thought. I mean, RTB, but desperate for material. But what was Spanish, Alan? This man's called Ingmar Bergman. Ingmar Bergman was a woman, Sue. <laughs> now, I know you're desperate to convince me that girls can do men's jobs, but I don't think that lying is going to help. I mean, is it? Here we go. Sue. What's this? <clears throat> uh, uh, coleslaw. <laughs> what? Well, coleslaw. That's all they had. Coleslaw or flapjacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that isn't just the ruddy limit... <laughs> Thingery do, eh? Suddenly the entire nation is being swamped under a tidal wave of coleslaw. <laughs> Perfectly decent cinema. They put on a Swedish film and suddenly nobody's allowed to eat sweets. <laughs> I can remember a time when you couldn't even get a pork scratching in a pub. Pork scratching? Oh, no, sir. This is a pub, not a restaurant. And then suddenly, wallop, half the bar turns into a, a glass coffin heaving with coleslaw and salad. It's cheap and nutritious, Alan. That's exactly what they said about Hitler, Sue, you clueless female. Nice one, Alan. Shut up, Bernard. You're talking about the woman I love. <laughs> sorry? Well, sorry is hardly going to be good enough with a Red Army in Trafalgar Square now, is it? Alan, I've had a great kicking on your racing bike. For years. British have been a nation of cabbage haters. Won't have it at any price. Some bright spark covers it in salad cream and bingo, I can't get my chalk ice. <laughs> Heaven must be filled with the spirits of despised school dinner ladies screaming, ha ha, that's cold cabbage you're eating, you bastard. <laughs> cabbage, pea, potato, cover it in salad cream and flog it to the trendies. It's so simple, it's brilliant. <laughs> with half a turnip that the pig doesn't want, you can start a wine bar. Have a good party. Sprinkle salad cream in the garden and the buffet's on the lawn. It's an economic Shut strap. up, Alan. The film's beginning again. Look at that camera angle. It's ridiculous. There's shadows everywhere. Ah, uh, you merry men. It's time for a feast, for I've been hunting and have shot us a fine, strong tree for our nourishment. Come. A tree, Robert? Just because I've become a vegetarian doesn't mean I have to give up hunting, Will. Yes, Robin, but... Roast tree? We're not going to roast it. We're going to have spaghetti bolognese, but with tree instead of mince. <laughs> now then, drink, you merry fellows, for this fine wine is a gift from the kind sheriff himself. How so, Robin? For it is not like the sheriff to grant us favors. Why, were they not his mules that we robbed this very morn? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. Come, let us eat. Certainly will. Can somebody pass the salt down to Will? <laughs> Robin. Yes, little John. It must be six foot four. <laughs> it's a killer, Robin. It's a killer. <laughs> you have heard it before, you know. Now then, little John. <laughs> This woman. Well, I spotted her crouching in the bushes, Robin. Why? Well, because you told me to keep a sharp eye out for anything acting suspicious. No, no, no. no. Why, why was she crouching in the bushes? The better to spy on us? I was having a wee. God, my girl's silly. Well, how can Robin Hood be of assistance to you, my pretty fair maid? Oh, sir, spare me blushes. Well, I only said you were pretty fair. Some girls are easily pleased, huh? <laughs> I bring a message from my mistress, Maid Marion. Prince John dines with the sheriff. And I do hear tell, if Robin Hood do not surrender by midnight, Maid Marion must die. So, what are you going to do about it? Prince John in Nottingham? Come, let us prepare. See thou, little John, boots unlaced. And thee, Will Scarlet, jerking off. Come, let us away! Will the wicked sheriff kill Maid Marion? Will Robin Hood be in time to rescue her? Will Scarlet's jerkin's very nice, isn't it? Such a fair beauty as Maid Marian sat with us four ruffians at the table is enough. 
to put me off my little boy. <laughs> Trouble not your loins on my behalf, bad prince. I would rather share my bed with a toad than a tyrant. <laughs> There's a hell of a lot more to a relationship than just plain sex, Marion. Like what? You have a clever tongue in your head, Maid Marion. Why not put it in mine and waggle it about a bit? Never. My heart belongs to Robin Hood. It's not your heart I'm interested in. Robin Hood will trouble us no more, for I've let it be known that unless he surrenders tonight, Maid Marion shall die. Now, bad prince, tell the ugly brutish earl a little more of your last boar hunt. Oh, well, that's so bad, prince, I believe. More wine, my lady. More wine, my lady. I never lost my wish. Not for an instant. Shut up, Marion. Do you want to lose me my job? I'm not allowed to talk to the guests. Robin, are you not here to rescue me? Yeah, well, you know, I was, but... Uh, well, it's a shilling a week, you know, and, and I don't have to give it to the poor or, or sleep in a forest. I mean, it's a good job. Well, it wasn't easy, you know, there were, there were 30, 35 people up for the job, but, uh, you know, I did a good interview and I, I just got it. I see now that I can trust no one. The honour of England is my responsibility. I can shun it no longer. My lords! Richard Cardinal Leon! Brother, um, brother Richard, I'm, I'm so dreadfully sorry. The Lionheart has returned! <laughs> no, um, no, you see, Richard's a man. Uh, I'm a woman. Maid Marian. I thought you all knew that. Didn't think you were the Marian kind. Well, she is ugly, brutish Earl. And now, it is time for her to die. Oh, look sublimey, I'm off for the present. <laughs> Away, you fellows! This wench is mine! I said you would be dead before midnight, Maid Marian, and so you shall! To the circumstances, you'll have to prove, proud sheriff! Then it's you! Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Good. That's lovely. Oh. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose the winner is going to be helping to clear up. Now no, 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 no. That's beautiful. Good. Good. That's lovely. Oh, that you should dance! Well, it's set fire to my leg. Why not finish the evening off? I spent an entire day trying to get asparagus in the middle of January and then this happens. I've had a job 12 hours. Mmm. Yes. Go on, go on, drop it on me, drop it on me now. Ah, you shall not escape me that easily. Now, for you, and now. Oh. Oh. Look, look, I'm sorry, but for Christ's sake, I had a boy in my face and that no, sword nearly went. If I'd gone down, I would have broken John, my nose. John, we discussed this. What is We've the had problem? this with him. What is wrong with this? Excuse me. Uh, I couldn't help but notice this manuscript on your leg, the Elvis I knew. Did you? Did you know Elvis? Oh, yes. I was his closest and dearest friend and his secret lover for many years. You're kidding. <sighs> Me too. You? Sure, as his lover and companion, I think he turned to me for comfort more than any other human being. It's all in my book. I knew Elvis. Funny how we never met till now, huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess it was kind of Crazy time. What are you two talking about? Everybody knows Elvis was gay. He never went for no chicks. I suppose you know, huh? Are you kidding? When Elvis died, he was calling my name. It's all in my book. Elvis and I, we knew each other. Oh, yeah? He never mentioned it to me. Oh, come on. Just talk to my publisher. Excuse me. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. I'm afraid you're all talking complete nonsense. How would you know? Well, because I am Elvis. This is my autobiography, Elvis, I Am Born Again. Maybe you could drop it off of the publishers on your way. There we are, sir. A very lovely pair of earrings for, if I may say so, a very lovely woman. I wouldn't mind hanging those up myself. Of course, you're very welcome to, and 
does you great credit, but I must be quite honest and say here and now that I'm not a woman, lovely or otherwise. No, Don's right. He's a man, aren't you, Don? Certainly am, Sal. We were only having a look at it the other day, weren't we? Oh, we did have a little look, yes, in the Nat West. Because, mm, you see, they've started putting Mr on my checkbox. Mm, probably for just such an occasion as this, actually, when confusion does arise. Mm. Would you like to have a look, just to set your mind at rest? No, no, no you, you misunderstand me, sir. I was referring to you, madam. You were not. I remember it quite clearly. You handed him the earrings and said, for a lovely woman. He was buying them and you said it. That's quite clear, right? Mm. Of course, you won't to know they're for the budgie. No. I was complimenting you, sir, on the beauty of your companion. Oh, I see. Yeah. Why? Don't, Don. Mustn't pry. Perhaps he likes being smug and condescending. Oh. I wouldn't. Yes, but you see, Don, you aren't. Each to his own. Oh, hang on. It was only a joke. No, 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 no. No, I don't like to seem pernickety here, but it wasn't a joke. No, a joke implies something witty and amusing, doesn't well, it, Don? So I've always thought so. Of course, I may be way out. Yes, that's true. Far be it from us. Goodness gracious me. Perhaps a joke is something fatuous and patronising, in which case yours was very good indeed. Mm, you told it very well. Mm, I must remember it. I'm useless at remembering jokes. Yes, me too. Now, what was it? Um... Here's your earring, sir, and I wouldn't half like to screw that thing standing beside you. Oh, what was it? What it was. I must tell it to the girls. Mm, they might not get it. Yes, that's the trouble with girls. No sense of humour. Mm. Mm. Hi ho. <laughs> that Kevin Cooper's a real pro. Why isn't he on the school team? Little Poof isn't interested. All he wants to do is sell cosmetics. What? He's obsessed. I caught him leafing through men only the other day. Oh, yeah. All they were doing were memorising aftershave ads. Well, if he won't play football and he won't play with himself, it's a sound reflection on us as teachers, Barry. Well, he could be a great star one day. It's up to us to do something, Jerry. Yeah. Hmm? Here, lads! Lads! This new school soap's amazing. A really tangy, refreshing feel. You should try it. We do, Kevin. It's all there is. No, but lads, it'll really score when it tackles that B.O. and make great saves on your weekly shop. Cooper, advertising cosmetics is no ambition for a lad. Oh, In future, sir. I shall turn my back and you'll sneak off lessons oh. and practice football every hour of the day and night. But I like lessons, sir. Bless him. I should be angry with him, I know. But how can I? He's a soccer genius. enough of your silly games. But, Mum, it's so simple. I come in and you see there's mud on my bottom, even though I know there really isn't. And you smile as if to say, bless him. And then you take them off me and pop them in the wash. Then later on, you hold them up to the window and say, mmm, clean and soft. That is different. Then I put them back on and you pat me off down the path. Oh, please. Soap powder is not a cosmetic, Kevin. It's a toilet product, Mum, and I could do a lot worse than earn my living advertising it. Come on, Kev. I've saved a couple of aftershave bottles. Let's go down the park and sell them to each other. Hey, I'll be customer first. You see if you can put one past me. Magic, Dad! Kevin! Your football practice! Oh, Dad, you spoil him, you know. Oh, come on, Mum! Right, lads, now nice straight backs. Ready, Mr. Arbuckle? Right, Mr. Sucker, coming up. Watch the birdie, lads, and... Cooper, headmaster's office. Well, Terry, looks like I've blown it. None of the big sides want to know. Fabergé, Revlon, Max Factor, even Poot's own brand just kicking it right back in my face. Looks like you'll have to become a first division footballer after all, Kev. Football? Remember when I was a kid? All them dreams I had? Funny, innit? Ah, something will turn up. Oh, 
Hi, hello. Uh, you've got a sign in the window. Boy wanted. I'd like to apply. Sorry, excuse me, but aren't you Kevin Cooper? Uh, yes, yes Sorry. I am. But, uh, no, it's Kevin Cooper. No, about the job. Oh, Hello. Sorry, but can I have your autograph, please? That's very much. That's yeah, really great. Okay. It's Maureen here, and I'm Jill. Jill. Sorry, Jill. Yes, Jill. Jill and Maureen. Oh, Maureen. Mm-hmm. That's very much. That's really that's so nice. Really nice. Really nice. Really nice. Very right? much. Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, but about the Saturday job, could what? I apply for it, please? What? What? I... <laughs> Saturday job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I, I won't be available, you know, two till five, winter afternoons, but I can get in a cab, I can straight down and work really hard for the Sorry, last half hour. No, I mean, the captain of England wants to help me with my prescriptions. No, oh, no, cosmetics. I want to sell cosmetics, you know, shift the scent, get behind a counter, know what I mean? Hello, oh, sir, would you like? No, sorry, love, Maureen does all that, don't you, Maureen? No, mm. I need a lad to help me with my prescriptions. Oh. Sorry. Nice one. But uh, we really Bye. think you're great. We really don't. If you don't know anything, I watch the football. Come back in You're really great. Oh. Getting a Saturday job in a chemist isn't the answer, Kevin. You can lend your name and your face to all the big TV companies. They'll gladly pay you for it. They're all doing it now. What do you mean? But that's right. Oh, thanks, Dad. Now I know what I've got to do. Kev, since we last spoke, you've become a changed man. Bright, vivacious and great. What's happened? Well, then, a game of cosmetics is all about selling cosmetics. That's a thought you've got to keep in your mind all the time. Now, I could have gone out there today and started talking about margarine, but that would not have got the cosmetics sold, right? Right. Well, let's have a look at part of that advert again. Oh, great. I haven't seen this. It smells absolutely terrific. And with this handy hole at the top of the bottle, it's really easy to pour out. Well, is that another out of the month for Kev? That's for you to decide. Blimey, Kev, you missed an open goal. And a penalty. Yeah, I'm sorry, lads. I've got a real problem. You see, I'm trying to work out a copy for my new advert, and I I can't decide between it's really great and it's really magic. What do you think? The game of cosmetics is a cruel bedfellow and Kevin Cooper is no exception. As his income from advertising falls, it's having a disastrous effect on his career. Well, Kevin is with us in the studio tonight. Kev, first of all, let's talk about last Saturday. Everything was going so well, and then what happened? I just dropped the bottle, Elton. The bottle? You mean you missed the ball? Oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about the match, aren't you? I I thought you meant the advert, Elton. Well, Kevin, there are a lot of people at home watching this, hanging on your every word. They want to know, we feel they ought to know, what is happening with your career. Well, Elton, I'll be honest. I know that a lot of kids in this country, British lads, look up to me and see me as a bit of a hero. And that's a great responsibility, Elton, you know that. And I can't help feeling that football is a bit puffy. Well, tell, I've blown it. I've trained and I've trained and now I'm so fit, I can hardly walk. I can see my future very clearly now. Morecambe and Wise Christmas show this year, mid-series episode of Little and Large and Next. Before you know it, it's going to be celebrity squares and charity appeals. Still, you had a good run, eh? Yeah. I'll tell you what, Tim. I didn't have shift some scent in my time, eh? Yeah, of course. No. No.